Welcome to the Airgun Advisor channel. Now, if you clicked on this video, it's probably for one of two reasons. One, you're into air guns and you love my air gun support vehicle and you want to find out more. Two, it's because of this rooftop tent up here. You're shopping for a rooftop tent and you're trying to decide if it's a value for you or if it's just going to be a waste of money. Well, I'm here to tell you we're going to be discussing the rooftop tent in detail from Inspired Overland today. And I've had it now for several months, had the chance to sleep in it, and I have really, really liked it. So let's go ahead and dig deep into this. If you're getting some value, make sure you give it a thumbs up at the very least, and then also help support the channel and click that subscribe button, guys. Help me win the algorithm and hit subscribe, and also if you get the opportunity, ring the bell. So let's go ahead and take a second and set up the tent. Well, other than actually getting my sleeping bag and my tents in there, this thing is ready to go. Probably took me under two minutes to get it set up and really didn't have to fuss with poles, looping them through things. And I absolutely love the fact that it's very simple to set up and really it's ready to go whenever I am. You probably notice it has a absolutely great little vestibule on the front of it. And that really, really helps with air circulation. When I slept in it the other night, that, having that open in a 80 to 90 degree weather, man, it was a lifesaver and it really helped to cool off the tent. But the other nice thing is that also not only does the front open up like that, but so do both sides. Let's take a look and show you how that happens. All right, so as we go up the ladder here, you're gonna notice a vent right there. And that vent is going to really help save you on some humid days and help yeah. the condensation become a minimal within this tent. And there's a couple other features that help with condensation too, but that is just one of them there. And there's also a small vent towards the back where your feet are going to go. So a couple nice little touches that they've added here on the tents. And I'm gonna go ahead and show you one other thing because I didn't realize this until I started really digging into this tent. On the inside here, it's Velcro. Check this out, it's got a nice little stay in there so it can really help pop that out and help with the air circulation even on a rainy day. So nice feature. Here are the shocks, the struts, to help push the tent up. Nice and easy. Check a look at those zippers while we're up here. They almost remind me of the zippers on an Arteryx jacket back in the day. If you're not familiar with them, very high-end company here. Remember, this tent is only going to cost you $1,500. It's not, not like one of those $4,000, $5,000 tents here. So a lot of features in this that aren't going to break your budget. And you see how really large of an opening that provides. And I want to get a little closer look here just to show you. Look at how the zippers are even have are seamed so you can have a nice watertight seal. You're going to notice that there's two zippers here, one for both the door itself and then also another for this mesh screen. So you don't have to worry about having only just one or the other. You have to actually get a choice. And while we're up here, look at the ripstop fabric. That is solid. It's not that really cheap, flimsy ripstop that you see like on nylon pants and that kind of stuff. This stuff is really thick and, you know, I haven't had it for that long, like I said, three months, but it really looks like it's a quality, quality product that's gonna last. When you're opening these doors, a couple of things you're gonna to wanna to keep in mind. First and foremost is that you do have the two zippers, so you have the choice of having the screen netting down. Second, when you roll these up, you're going to want to roll these, and I did this wrong, you're going to want to roll these to the inside so as not to collect any water. So you probably watched me do this earlier, and I did it absolutely wrong. You want to roll them up like this so on the inside 
you have all the fabric and on the outside you don't have anything to catch any moisture and any water down there. Now, when I first started working with this tent, I didn't notice this, but if you do want to have everything open, it gives you the opportunity to do so and it has two really nice little cinch straps so you can not only have this cinched up but then you can also have the mosquito netting cinched up separately so when it comes time to putting it down you're not trying to undo both you can just do the one that you want and then take care of the other one at another time nice little feature and i'm glad that they thought of that Now that I'm all the way up in the top of the tent, man, the view up here is absolutely gorgeous. You can actually see all around you. I've got all the doors open, so you've got a nice almost 360 degree view of everything. This all zips up on the front here, as well as this flap will zip down if you're having some inclement weather and you really need to button down the hatches. But I love how it just hangs over, gives you a little bit of extra shade, and with everything open, you really get a nice cool breeze coming through here. So let's go on in here. Let's take a look at some of the features on the inside of the tent now. First and foremost, we have these nine pockets that hang from the ceiling. It's perfect for hanging any medication, lights, flashlights, any pamphlets you might have, maps for the next day, anything that you might need, keys to the car, this is where you're going to want to store them so they're up safe and they're with you and you're not going to misplace them. I am six foot tall and it fit me just about perfectly. The one thing I like to see added is about two inches in length just to let me stretch out my feet a little bit. If you look down there, let me get out of the way so you can see, my feet do become wedged down in the bottom of the tent and I really could not stretch them up. So if you like to sleep on your back, that might be a little bit of a concern, but otherwise I had a great night's sleep regardless of that. Up on the roof here, we have three more pockets going on. Those pockets are again, nice and handy for keys, medication, whatever else you might have. So a total of 12 pockets on the inside. And then take a look right here on the door. On that front door, you're gonna notice there is another vent. And that vent's gonna again, help to reduce any condensation from all that hot air inside the tent. So let's take a look at the mattress. I'm gonna fold up the mattress here, you can see probably about a half inch on the mattress foam. Uh, not super thick, not super squishy, but you know, a heck of a lot nicer than sleeping on any kind of, you know, backpacking mat or small inflatable mattress like those Thermarests. This thing first and foremost, because it goes all the way across the tent, you're not gonna roll off of it. But what's underneath here is just as important. I'm gonna roll this all the way back and see if you guys can actually see this mesh netting now this mesh netting is about a quarter of an inch thick so in total you have about three-fourths of an inch of padding uh, material to kind of keep you comfortable this is going to help with any condensation inside the tent you can see it's a nice mesh it's got a little of squishiness to it almost like a little spring inside of there now, i know it's not a spring but just the material kind of bounces back when you squeeze it and that's gonna prevent condensation from underneath. Now underneath this mat here, and this is the feature that I think needs to be advertised because lots of rooftop tents have difficulty with condensation building up underneath the mattresses. So then underneath there you have, again, your ripstop material. Very thick, very nice material. Not quite like a canvas, but thick. It's very thick. It's not like um, ripstop pants or anything, much thicker than that. And as you hear, Underneath there, there is a um, plastic sheet that goes and lines the entire bottom of the tent. So that's gonna keep, when you're on the road, it's gonna keep moisture from coming up from the outside and building on the inside of the tent. You don't want that to happen because who, who wants to open up your tent and find it soaking wet? So having that PVC sheet underneath of here is very nice to keep everything nice and dry in here no matter where you're driving to. Now talking about mattresses, let's take a look at this you're going to notice this white line. Well, that is a zippered sheet across here. And that's going to mean that, you know, after a nice long trip, or if maybe you have a particularly rainy trip, you have the ability to take the sheet off of your foam mattress here and then take it inside and wash it. It also gives you the ability to replace the foam that's inside when over time it begins to squish down. Now, as I begin to work my way down the tent, each side, you can notice these brackets right here. 
These brackets really help to lock in your ladder so it's not going to come down in the middle of the night. Uh, nice little safety feature there. They are kind of hard to work yourself into and you can adjust these along the track too. So if you need to adjust them or pinch them in a little bit to get away from the curve of the ladder there, you can do that as well. Let's go ahead and take a second and talk about this ladder. This ladder is an aluminum fold up ladder and it folds up really, really small. Now the one thing that you should keep in mind is that it is rated for 150 kilograms and that's approximately 333 pounds. Now it can hold quite a bit of weight. I'm 180 pounds. You do see a little bit of give in this ladder at 180 pounds. So you're going to want to keep that in mind if you're picking up this tent. Now it wouldn't be a complete review if I didn't show you the undercarriage of the tent. And here it is. You're going to see those aluminum bars going across there, provide plenty of support for you. And then the two silver ones are what you're going to mount on your crossbars for whatever system you use to get that tent off the bed of your truck. So keep that in mind. You also will notice there are four attachment points to those crossbars in the corners there. And let's get a closer look. You're going to notice that this attachment here is just a sheet of steel. Now, like I said, I've had this up here for about three months. It has not moved on me at all. So I'm really pleased with how that has turned out. The one thing that you should keep in mind is if you live in an area where you're afraid your equipment is going to get stolen, you may want to go ahead and put an extra nut on each one of those and maybe even some Loctite to make it even a little more difficult to take the tent off in the middle of the night. Now, is that going to stop everybody? Absolutely not, but it could be just a little feature that you could do to help make things just a little more secure. Now there you go, the inspired Overland tent in a nutshell. Now if I left out a detail that you're very interested in, please leave that question down in the comments down below. I really want to help you guys out because I do know that even at $1,500 and this being a very budget friendly tent when it comes to rooftop tents, I know it's an expense for a lot of you. Would I change it out for one of the four or $5,000 rooftop tents that you see advertised everywhere? I don't know. I've never slept in one, never used one. I've never even seen one in person other than going down the highway on the back of somebody's truck. So would I get this tent again? Absolutely. I think it has a lot of value. My son absolutely loves it. And my wife who thought I was crazy about picking it up, it's even grown on her a little bit. And I think I'm going to be able to get her out camping on this tent or in this tent as well sometime very soon. Here is a coupon code that's going to save you 5%. It's also going to help the channel out, help us grow. I've never done that before, so I hopefully you guys can take advantage of it. Hey, if you haven't seen the rest of my setup behind me, I'm going to be taking a look at some of the other products in there as well. And again, here is the overview of that setup, kind of the introduction to all the different pieces and parts. So go check that out as well. I still can't believe how easy that is. Guys, until next time, make sure that trigger pull stays smooth and those pellets fly straight. And we're going to see you right here on the Airgun Advisor.